Let's talk about some test tips. These test tips have been designed to help you identify areas of focus before taking the exam. What we'd like to know is, again, some basic IT security terminology, but also how to implement these as requirements. For example, the CIA triad. We want to know what it is, why it's important. We want to go into the exam being able to identify authentication and authorization. For example, what do we know and what do we have? Accountability and then repudiation. Now repudiation is what? Being able to ensure that if a user, for example, uses our system, that we can actually, without a doubt, basically ensure that we could provide some kind of proof that it is who they say they are. For example, how do we do that? Typically through a digital certificate. When it comes to PKI and certificates, we want to know why certificates are important. For example, X509 certificates, know what they are, how they are implemented, etc. We want to know what a private key is and a public key is as well. We also want to understand digital signatures. We also want to be aware of some terms that I typically still find confusing. We want to know fail safe, fail secure, and fail open. This is a way we can implement basically exception management. What happens if a function fails? How do we handle it, for example? Some other terminology around single points of failure. Now again, we want to know resilience, fault tolerance, availability, load balancing, auto scaling. Please do go into the exam and understand what they mean and why they're important. Lastly, how do we handle identifying and dealing with a single point of failure? We want to know what IETV is. That's the short way of memorizing the workflow to do that. Remember, identify, evaluate, test, and then validate. And then as far as understanding the difference between fail safe and fail secure, this again can be confusing and I'm, I'm pointing that out again, respectively, remember fail safe provides minimum harm, whereas fail secure blocks access. And lastly, when it comes to principles of secure design, we want to be aware that security related mechanisms and the proper design should be applied. We want to think about simplicity. That really comes down to the best approach in most cases. If we keep things simple, that's probably one of the best practices that we should ever run into. We want to reduce possible inconsistencies and it's just easier to understand. That's basically what simplicity is about. Now, what about restrictions? Not all the time is simplicity the best option, of course. But we may need to minimize access and interactions, for example, or reduce or eliminate communications as well. And anything that we can do to keep our environment simple, but also secure, is a good thing. And before we take the exam, we do want to know the areas around keep it simple. Let's move on to the review questions.